evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Road to Winter Cup. I am joined by not one, but two Euros qualifiers, Jacob Barnes and James Kiddy. Good evening. How's Hello. it going, boys? We're good, we're good. We're here for a bit of Road to Winter Cup. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Everyone's starting to buy their tickets. Uh, and we're going to see a lot of experimental decks tonight, so... Exactly. Mm -hmm. The point, the point where now, obviously, the, the the big competitive season has kind of come to a close. So everyone's just kind of having a bit of fun, which is really where Final Fantasy is at its best, in my opinion. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to seeing our first match. We have got Paul McAvoy, uh, big Papa Paul himself, playing a Scion's Monsters list, which absolutely kicked the crap out of me earlier, and uh, Gareth playing some version of Ice Wind. So mm -hmm. should be interesting. Anything from you boys? Yeah, I think oh, you pretty much said it all. I, I mean, we're looking forward to seeing some more unique decks rather than what we've seen a lot come up, um, especially you know with, with Euros uh, not too far gone, um, where obviously we had some very solid cemented uh, meta decks that we're seeing around quite a lot. So hopefully we can really you know see some some uniqueness tonight. So I think it's quite exciting. Well, I said we say Ice Wind, and Ice Wind has been a very established meta deck for as long as we can remember. But you say there's a twist, and I want to see this twist. What interesting little tech choices has he gone to surprise us, catch us off guard? And in terms of the monsters, Scions, never heard those two words uh, together in my life. So no. I ain't got a clue yeah, what's going on. To our first, uh, first game, we were... Uh, basically playing Alice into the wind Ishtola to shut off any autos and summons which really hurt um, so oh he's playing something different we've just been informed okay really uh, you've just done going, this I mean going while, back to his roots yeah well while, while, while we're live we've been told Gareth is playing something different uh, what that is we'll have to learn along uh, with you guys at home so very most likely a Gareth deck uh, is what it sounds mate, like his so. multi-element stuff is always great fun so I think oh, if we yeah. swap over to the uh, to the gameplay table we'll uh, keep yeah. waffling while they're doing up a shuffle and see who's going first uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Gareth does pull out of his sleeve. His multicolour decks are well known throughout the community. Moogles being one of the primary engines yeah. that he likes to do. Good King Mogamog being a friend to us. Yeah, usually, usually with the payoff of Gilgamesh from Ice and uh, mm -hmm. a, a lovely turn one Neo X death I'm hoping to see, to be honest. Cause no, that's... no one likes a turn one <laughs> Neo X death, let's be real here. Alright, so we don't know who's going first. It mm -hmm. looks like it might be Paul. We got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That is a Shantoso. Paul going straight away. Oh, is that a Kyle FF14? That's yeah. a card we haven't seen in a while. That's yeah. a forward can't be returned to hand, I believe. Yeah, it took me by surprise earlier, actually. I was one expecting to see it in there, but it is a, a Scion, so, you know. Mm -hmm. Names count, names count. Names do count indeed, especially when playing Estola. And there's the Moogle, as we were saying. So the wind so, should tap for Earth, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like we're probably going with his usual five-colour Gilgamesh. Mm -hmm. So I am gutted we didn't see a turn one uh, Neo X death, but there we go. We do have the Alice into the Alpha no, a classic staple of Scions at this point. Alpha no being able to search pretty much every single card in your deck. So dealer's choice. What, what, what do we think we're going to get? Probably some kind of backup engine here. Or not, never mind. Ignore no. me, we're going straight in with the... Uh, we are going wide. Yeah, because it, it just lets him, it's uh, that thing. Mm, He's a killer. Black yeah. Knight, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we it's haven't seen that in a while. Four or less enters? Yes, four or less enter. Break it. Mm -hmm. What fun. You ain't got nothing on this, but... Now, the interesting thing is, Gareth being a multicolor deck, he obviously wants to set up his backups so he can, you know, be able to play whatever he needs from his hand. Paul is not giving him any time at all. Yeah. And from what I understand from this deck from Paul as well, plays no summons. So uh, Gareth does not have to worry about Miss Dragon messing up his colors in Break Zone, which is going to be great. Yeah, I mean, you're, mi you're missing out on a lot, especially in the, the colors we've seen so far where you've got you know, fire, earth, and lightning. You're not seeing any mist dragon. You're not seeing any Amaterasu. You're not seeing any Ixians. So really, there's quite a lot of good stuff in these elements that, that you know, just don't have to consider this game, which is going to be quite helpful. But at the same time, it, it is the trade for having this many monsters and deck, which I'm going to presume is, is the idea. Is that going to pay off? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine Gareth running many experts as well. I mean, we don't see any come through. No, it's a Behemoth K. And a few other things, and the mirrors coming down. 
Mira needs monsters. He has monsters. He has another Dark Knight. Now, Gareth does have three moogles up. But he's only got less than their ideal elements between them. Because the ice taps, for, the wind taps for earth. The lightning taps for water. But the ice taps for wind. So he doesn't have access mm. to as many colours as you would probably like out of that moogle package. No, and he's under a lot of pressure now. He got rid of the Gilgamesh early. He's got... Four colours in break, earth, wind, yeah. lightning and ice. It's dead next Yeah, turn. I was going to say, the yeah. thing is you've got to think about now is literally, you know, there's four forwards on board, he's taken three damage already, is, unless you praise upon the, the gods to get a, uh, a lovely expert here, honestly. I don't think might you can run any experts in multicolour decks. Not, it's not that easy. Not, not there might be good Odin's, amounts. but that's about it. Yeah, I, I don't think we're going to see that from Gareth because a lot of his revolves around character interaction, uh, you know, again... Things like Neo X Death. I think he plays uh, one of the Cap Four. Um, well, it might actually be Golbez, the the light or dark version. Mm -hmm. dark version. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. It's a tough one now because he needs to play a forward, but the Dark Knight's going to sucker a forward unless it's a big body. <laughs> and I don't th one one thing I don't think you guys might have noticed, but Paul has four cards in hand still. <laughs> so yes. even if Gareth does some crazy shenanigans and what manages to wipe the board whether or not the black knight survives or not Paul's going to have six in hand with, with a backup next turn like that's yeah. still it's brutal this, we should know who wins this game within the next few turns because either Gareth stabilises this board and is able to generate a win through that or Paul wins it's very shy I believe it is a four or less so absolutely will die and die to the dark knight But he is going to get that entry effect. Yeah. yeah so, so this is going to be. Uh, you can bounce bouncing one. Bouncing one and dulling and freezing another, which is. Why is it with the afternoon in the break zone? I don't know. You may have to go on your skates and go down. <laughs> There's probably a reason for it. <laughs> nah. That does yeah. obviously do that. Yeah, no, it should go back to hand and not to the break zone. Kitty's going to have to get used to this whole running back and forth because that's going to be his job. <laughs> there you go. Paul, Paul was jumping the gun assuming that Chime was a good card. <laughs> that's a, a, a very low blow from Jacob there. What did he say? The, thinking uh, Paul thought that Chime was a good card. Ooh. <laughs> no, I can't chime in with an opinion on that one. There it is. Welcome to Cringe Evening. Uh, if you'll excuse me, guys, I've, I've just ended my career off at the back of that cringe. <laughs> well, we get a Moogle. We get a Sephiroth. That would have been a very good draw. Now, you're right here, Jacob. Paul does have, what, seven cards in hand yep. now. <laughs> well, with the bounce as well, yeah. I mean, you can just kind of uh, ooh, play whatever like, he wants, ooh, and that's definitely ooh, a card that yeah. I don't think Gareth yeah. wanted to see. Uh, as, as if to put the nail in the coffin comes his shoulder. And again, watching Paul earlier play that off of the Alice was a bit gross. Mm. So, uh, I mean, the only, the only outs Gareth will, would have here is uh, action abilities or special abilities, which generally are quite a commitment to, to, to get down. I mean, mm. especially when you're dealing with that many forwards. Mm. So, well, I think the Ishtola is the card I hate the most in this entire game. It just messes with you on so many levels that you don't mm. want to be dealing with. I, I, the thing as well with it is it's not like say where we saw Black Knight obviously where the first thing that comes down it deals with Ishtola you can stick stick around until that one point where your opponent will really get crippled by it and he's still got five in hand he's still sitting pretty on five and Gareth's got he's got backups yeah five, five in hand only four in break and only one backup you feel if like Gareth could actually answer the sport presence here right now Ishtola not, you know, proving yeah. otherwise. He might claw his way back, but... Well, it, it just goes to show the, the amount of value you generate off just the Alice Alphano combo. He's netted so much free resources and damage off that one combo. And, it, yeah, he got lucky in the perfect matchup in a sense that your opponent probably can do much into it. But then again, that leans into the style of the play, and you know this deck is what you're playing against. This is how you should play against it. It's, it's funny how much that the, this these Alice and Alphano, those two pair, remind me an awfully lot of the um, Layla Vikings. Yeah. Because you spend four CP, you get two forwards, 
and you get an extra card in hand, obviously, with Viking Draw. Difference being, of course, with this is that you get to search the card instead and be whatever the hell you want. And the forwards are a bit chunkier. Obviously, you don't get the draw when the Viking dies as well. It's a little bit more difficult to set up, but the premise is still the same, and I mean... Uh, Aldo, oh, okay. okay. I haven't seen this one in a while. Aldo Emperor. Do, this is, I this believe... This is not bad. This was a, a damage 5 effect before... It, it, it I, is. Well, However, can Ishtola, I didn't see the word in on this exactly, because can Ishtola cancel all the effects? I believe it's one or the other. No, he gets to select up to two of the three, so if the Sherlock can only cancel one of them. Yeah, there will be two separate lines of text, yeah, so. Uh, I think, though, we're going with the potential that Paul may have cancelled both. That's what we needed. That's exactly what we needed, was an, was an answer and the, the, the Greg. I mean, if, if you guys haven't. If you guys aren't long term viewers and you haven't seen Gareth on, on, on stream before, then you might not know what this card does, and I wouldn't blame you for it. Um, but obviously, long-time fans of Gareth. Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm going to double-check yeah. that Aldor thing, so I need to set yeah, one. Can you show I'm not sure, cancel one of them? Yeah, because I'm not sure if you played the Gilgamesh off of the Aldo effect, but... Uh, just sending Kitty up to double-check before the game state gets too far. Um, but yeah, you're completely right though, Jacob. Long-time viewers will notice what this card is. Not many people beyond that will, though, because, uh, you know, very few of us are crazy enough to play that, but... You know, uh, Gareth's deck has always been excellent. It's you know, sort of color ramping again. Is a we're wrong. Elder is just one whole effect. So oh, yeah, oh, okay. So, so as much as we know, uh, you're as players, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you can't know every card under the sun as much as we'd all love you to. I mean, what I what we'd like ideally would be is, a, is a judge program that would actually tell us the answers. But here we are. Trying our best. I mean, snide comments aside, Jacques. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, and there has been a lot of clambering in the community for that for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, and it would only make the game stronger if we could go mm -hmm. down that road. So. Well, that's it. We're on the road to winter now. Winter means new year, new year means new things, so we can't wait to see what is coming up in the next new year. In the present, that's a Tyro, and that mm. feels slow. Uh, it I'm, feels slow unless he, unless he gets, gets the answer where he just wins. Estinian? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking, well, it could be more of a, an Ishtola. Obviously, enters, yeah. pings the Aldor. Yeah, it would, swings, it would, it pings would. the Aldor again, and then Aldor's going to have to trade with one of the two when he gets another attack in. He's having a good old think about Ishtola it. Ishtola would do enough, though, to actually kill the Aldor Emperor, so. Oh, it's two 4k pings, right? So he's then forced no, to trade uh, with another. It, doesn't it count itself, though? And also, the Kral is a Scion. Pull it up no, on screen. No, I'm thinking, no, I'm thinking of the um, dual element. Oh, you what? No, you one. don't play that one. You yeah, don't you play that one. You don't play that one. one. Or oh, we could just go with this. Yeah, instead. I mean, that, that also works. So, I don't know, does, does Gareth have any cards in hand? So how does he do this? No. Oh, no, so, it breaks uh, three or less. It breaks Gilga, yeah. and then he can give it haste. Yeah. Yes. And it is a 9k, which means it slaps into the Aldor, which means then Urianji and Mira should be able to do the last points of damage that we need is the theory line I think Paul has just decided that he wants to play Pokemon <laughs> where he just he just if there's a card he needs in his deck he gets it because mm -hmm. that's what is literally every single time he needs a card he's going to find it yeah. uh, there's a Xenos now Gareth takes this he takes this well, he has to, yeah. Yep, and then he passes. That is, that's the only way he lives. If he blocks the elbow, he loses. I am still quite shocked that Paul didn't get the Ishtola there and just play it and kill the Aldo Emperor. He had no lightning CP. We don't know what's in his hand, though. Yeah, he's still got, I see. Yeah, he's still got like, he's got three cards. He's got, he's got two. So if one was fire, one was lightning. Hmm. Unless it's in hand, then we're just waiting until next turn. I mean, Ishola falls into that category of the Zidane bands, where every single card they print of this is playable in some way, shape, or form. You got the dual color, you got the lightning, you got the earth wind one. Yeah. You got the mono you got earth the, one, the four drop. Mm -hmm. The mono wind one. The six drop nine k. Yeah. Although Doesn't I don't think I've ever, ever actually seen that in anyone's sleeve. So it it, it did briefly, but and, and it's an absolute belter of a card. But the problem is, it's called Ishola. Uh, you know, it, it, it's like another. Another funny little character I like to call uh, Shantoto, you know, and every single time that card gets printed, it's like, well, we'd sure love to play this card. Uh, yeah, and I think one of the only people I know 
who well actually no two people I know that actually don't play just the seven drop is you where you play the you know well nine drop the the uh, six actual drop. six drop forward and then you've got uh, Liam obviously in his earth wind that plays the five drop backup so which are both are very good cards but and also you've got the ice one but well that that card's in a different deck so is that a pass. No, he's think thinking he's, about yeah. it. He's thinking about it. Are you thinking of killing the Xenos? Because that's a very bad idea. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. The good thing is, he hasn't got a Dark Knight, he hasn't got an to worry about. So the board's his to do with as he pleases. He's only got two cards in hand, though, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Could be he, three, but I think it's two. He, he had to commit a lot last turn to be able to yeah, not this die. Two. So, which is exactly what Paul wants. And he, oh, there it is. Uh, that is not the one you should have done there, son. I mean, well, to be fair, I, I guess Senos doesn't really have anything it can do when it enters because it has yeah. to break a through LS. So oh, it's oh, uh, GG. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, for, top deck to interact. Yeah, just do something when you enter combat. Game over. Mm. Right, well, Extend handshake. Yeah. I think it's fair to say the way that Paul played that made it an incredibly horrible matchup for Gareth because you do you want time you want a bit of time yeah. to set up your break zone for your Gilga and your board so you can play whatever you need to play out of your hand and he just was not giving any time showing off that UV yeah that would have done something gotta draw it though yeah that is the way the cookie crumbles sometimes though you don't know what you're going up against and as someone that particularly doesn't like a uh, aggro matchup that's uh, painful to watch mm. Well, Paul is XO going into our Road to Winter Cup round one. We'll hopefully see if he can climb much further up the table. I mean, having a look around, I can see a sea of different decks on offer. So we're hoping that we will grab something equally interesting as the four colour in the Shola Monsters for round two. Welcome back, guys. We're here very quickly um, with... Uh Round one champion Paul McAvoy. Um, I took no pleasure in that. <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> it it was already brutal. dead. Absolutely. It, I, I, I played smashed that it. Early Black Knight. And he went, he just looked at me and went, everything in my deck costs three. And I was like, with damage, like, oh, look, there's something that costs five. Behemoth Cave, which would be really bad for me. But it was, he, he rattled through the deck at the end and said, like, oh, he had, like, the uh, 8 CP vein. I was like, mm. man, if you played that. That would have been really difficult for me because that means I couldn't play Rianchi to the board and keep him there. True. I mean, yeah. you didn't have to kick the guy while he was down for. No, I, do you know what? I didn't. If you look at my hand, it's just like, I had another Black Knight. It's like, oh, I feel really bad about this. I had his Tola. It's like, oh, I can kill that as well. But it's like, you played the Elder Emperor and I was just like, oh man, actually, that's pretty good right now as well. Because like, like, the other removal in my hand is Ariman. I was like, oh, I can't actually get him with that. So, no, I have to get the Gilgamesh. I wanted to go a few extra turns to see what it was going to do. But like, just, just playing with your food. No, <laughs> no, don't. I mean, with, with, with that deck specifically, uh, it, it's a very good anti mid range deck. I think because it, it wants to get cards in its break zone, and obviously you just didn't let him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you I, I love Black Knight, man. It literally turns off an opponent's turn. It's horrible. Mm. It's a horrible card. Obviously, they can. Oh, the, the argument against it is oh they can play around it by playing something worse yeah it's still killing something right well yeah that's it that, that's still a massive deficit yeah. so well, I was saying earlier as well um, you know while we were just talking and watching your game um, this uh, Alice Alphano combo is, is reminding me a lot of Layla Viking where you just you know, when you, people used to play Layla Viking turn one yeah and you'd have two forwards yeah and you'd net yourself back a card but obviously now they're a little bit beefier. Well, but you get to choose the card. And not only that, it's like you've got the Alize Elf now, and you've got uh, either Orange or yeah. uh, or the Black Knight, and then like you discard the Black Knight, play the Orange, and you've got three, and then you get that on the board as well. You, you've got say, I've got four guys on the board, and there's only one card in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's like uh, if you were looking, and it's you just had like after you, you know. Spewed what we what we assumed was spewed your head out to get that board today. You still had four in hand I've and a backup ready to go. I've, I've put more in, in as well because there's a few things I was trying out last. I was trying uh, Hill Gigas, but like never really seemed to do anything. And I tried out Layak, but it, my guys aren't big enough for it to really matter. For, yeah, for sure. But uh, and I tried Cleon, but Cleon just should have been the third Black Knight. Hmm. Um, and it's come down to like I've gone for so I needed to. Uh, Typhon out because you can get rid of him anyway with, with Mirror uh, but I've put in Death Gaze like, did see the Death Gaze it's just like, really interesting. remove something from the game yeah, cool. yeah. 
That's all you needed to do, really, isn't it? Phoenix, beautiful card. It's just all, everything removal. I just, I love the idea as well. You don't pay for it. I, I've got the five CP behemoth in there as well, just to be oh, a, a yeah. second spectral keeper. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I mean, know. I mean, it's not going to be necessarily difficult for you to be in a position where you just play Urianja and play for free anyway. It, it, it's not, it's not going to come up every game. But you can not, get five really yeah, exactly, easy. Yeah. Really easy. But, and if you are worried about them killing things in the stack, you go, well, okay, Black Knight. <laughs> God. Yeah, it it's is. Horrible stuff. Yeah. And I, I say I took no pleasure in that. That wasn't, that wasn't fun. Well, it was fun, but it wasn't <laughs> fair. <laughs> I, I, to be honest, when you said that uh, Gareth was changing his deck, I was like, I know he plays no summons, so he doesn't have to worry about Mist Dragon if he's playing his five. Well, that's what I said. I, I said to him, it's like, if you want to play Gilgamesh, I don't. I, said, I thought, I, I thought it would, wouldn't go like that. To be honest, <laughs> I say like, if you want, like, if you want to do it, like, I don't have Mist Dragon and I don't have any Dull and Freeze. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's not like Cisne where I'm just like never gonna let. You know what we did on the on the showcase where it was just like Cisne's and like shurikens off of the edge just to make sure that Google Mage is never gonna do anything. Um, but no, it was it's good fun. It's good fun. What do you, what do you reckon the weaknesses of the deck are then? What if you, if you say you know you, your opponent sits across you and plays Miss Dragon, deck, just Miss Dragon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's only a bit of fun this one. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's the off season now, so yes, but we, it's exactly the point we were making earlier. Yeah. You know, until we get the new Decidia cards next week, tomorrow basically, but next yeah. week it's uh, hard to do too much. Good. I haven't really figured out what to do with them yet. I haven't even read them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's a weird one because it's not quite as forced as some of the more recent starter decks have been. Uh, there's definitely a lot of interesting things you could possibly do with them, but none of them really scream, this is a deck I love me. the idea of like putting it in like mannequins, because yeah. I think the Light Barts is really cool. But if you play the Light Barts, you can't play Spiritus, the, like, the, the Dark Crystal backup. It's like... Doing so much for this subcategory and then like crystals. I've got no idea what it's supposed to be, what it's supposed to do, but. Oh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. It yeah. does, it, uh, it, at the very least, I feel like it makes the wind edge slightly better because it, you've now got so many different ways of generating more crystals and other than that. Is there a deck for it though with the cards that are in there? Well, I, I, that's, that's, the, that's the thing, isn't and, it? And crystal generation was never really an issue beforehand, let's be fair. Well, it's, it's funny because crystal generation has always been good enough, mm. but there's never been like... Because I, I think with these new decks, they almost like wouldn't mind sort of a crystal, like getting flooded with crystals. Because like, you know, there's some decks you can end up with like four crystals and none of them are doing anything. The only exception in my, I, I, you know, I can really think of is that Glaciella is always going to have use for crystals until all the Glaciellas are gone. Mm. Uh, but I think these decks might actually mean it's make, make, make it so that you can generate excess crystals and have use for them. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, time will tell, I guess. We'll have to see you next week. Yeah, you know, this, this, this week's going to be the fun week. Next week we're going to see even more fun stuff. Uh, Leading, leading up to the Winter Cup, you know how it is. That's it. Ro- Get your tickets now. now. Get the tickets. Started, yeah. Battlefields to Cut UK. Jo- join us. It will be a fun weekend. There will be live commentary, offshoots, prizes, giveaways. I'm sure. So. And uh, the uh, the annual Christmas party. Yeah. <laughs> Many a drinks will flow. We'll Many. Say that. So I guess we will go to be right back. The round should be coming near to an end. Yeah, yeah it looks like the round has ended, so yeah, yeah. we will not be too much longer. We'll yeah. get into round Let's two. go find out who's coming up next. See you guys very shortly.